Parallels recently released version 17 of their software for virtualization. It is supposed to improve compatibility and performance for Apple M1 chips. And here I'm going to show you how to use it to run Fallout 4. I'm using a tool called Bethany, downloadable from the Nexus Mod site, that is used to configure various Bethesda games, including Fallout 4. Here you can see the settings I'm using to get this running. There is one other important configuration that we need to make to this file and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. As you can see I'm making some custom modifications to the pour preset by turning off god rays and a few other features and that will help performance considerably. We will be playing at a low resolution which is not very good on a large monitor but works perfectly for the small 13 inch screen on a MacBook Air or Pro. Fallout 4 used to run very well in Crossover 20 but in Crossover 21 seems to have some audio issues. So here we're showing how to run it in Parallels as opposed to Crossover. The performance isn't quite as good in terms of frame rate, but the audio works much better. And other features like VATS work very well too. And there aren't the graphical glitches with vegetation as well. Although you'll see there are a few graphical problems with uh, Parallels as well. Although this is not running at a full 60 frames per second, it feels to be running at about 30 frames per second, perhaps 40 and is playable. While the action is not perfectly fluid, it is quite playable. In the next scene, we'll be demonstrating how well the game plays by fighting some raiders at Backstreet Apparel on the banks of the Charles River. As you can see here, the audio is working perfectly in the intro screen. Right now, we're loading up a save, and in a moment, we'll venture into Backstreet Apparel. Previous versions of Crossover ran Fallout 4 very well, but the most recent edition, Crossover 21, has issues with Fallout audio. Fortunately, Parallel 17 has picked up the slack and can run the audio just fine. Crossover also had issues with VATS, the auto-aim feature in Fallout 4, and again, this works perfectly fine in Parallel 17. There are a few graphical issues, as you'll see when we load the game. Here you can see Vats in action as we take out a raider. And again as we take out a turret. On the painting between the explosion and the door, you'll notice some flickering going on. I'm not sure if this is Zed fighting or if it is simply a problem with decals. You'll see some more of this flickering in the next room on some of the dirty paintings, as you'll see in a moment. Again, we're seeing some weird flickering on the paintings on the wall. I'm not sure what that's about, but it's not a major problem as far as gameplay is concerned.
Now we're off to Diamond City to fight some super mutants. As you can see, the shadows are kind of blocky, but again, this is necessary to ensure good performance. It's also important to keep the draw distance down to keep uh, objects off screen from hindering performance. As you can see here, VATS is working as it's supposed to with no issues. While the weapon I'm using may be unfamiliar to some players, this is not a modded game. In my next video, I will attempt to mod the game and see if it's possible under Parallels. Uh, I'm not sure that Fallout 4 Script Extender will work with Parallels, but I will attempt to do so in my next video. For the final part of the video, I'll reveal some compatibility settings that need to be set in order for this game to work properly under Parallels. Here you can see me going to Local Files and Steam. Once the File Explorer is open, you can right-click on the Fallout for Executable and set a compatibility mode to run under Windows 8 Compatibility. If you do not set this compatibility mode, the game will not run at all. This is even more important than the performance tweaks we made earlier and it's the final step to ensuring that it works properly under Parallels.